photosynthesis and in this video we're simply making connections because we've already studied the light stage and the dark stage in two previous summary videos. Now we're just putting it all together. So photosynthesis is taking place in the chloroplasts of plant cells and the light stage is taking place in the grana of those chloroplasts, so those stacks of thylakoids. So when we think of the light stage, we know that light energy is absorbed by pigment molecules and eventually this light energy gets passed to a specially positioned reaction centre chlorophyll. This results in an electron being energised and it leaves chlorophyll. But we have to remember that this is happening super quick in a fraction of a second and so there are many electrons one after another. So that's why in your book it might say electrons. In the light stage, we've learned that there are two pathways. Pathway one is the cyclic pathway, where energised electrons will leave chlorophyll. They'll pass over an electron transport chain, which is just a series of electron acceptor molecules. And as a result, ATP is formed. But ultimately, the electrons return to chlorophyll. So in pathway two, the energised electrons leave chlorophyll. They pass over the electron transport chain, so those electron acceptor molecules. ATP is formed, but those electrons do not return to chlorophyll. So ultimately, the electrons that left chlorophyll will eventually get trapped by NADP plus to form NADP minus. It's really important to recognise that the electrons that are trapped by NAD plus have indeed been re-energised and that's not mentioned often. So just bear that in mind. So they are high energy electrons. And basically then photolysis of water has to take place. So water molecules have to be split using light energy. And the reason for that is to replace the electrons that have not returned to chlorophyll. So when you split water molecules, you get electrons, which go to replace those lost by chlorophyll, protons, which go to a proton pool, but will ultimately form NADPH, and oxygen, which is either used for respiration inside the leaf, inside the plant, or it's released to the atmosphere. So we also learned the products of the light stage. We know that ATP was formed, NADPH, that high energy molecule, and also oxygen as a result of photolysis of water. So then in video two, we went on to the dark stage and we learned why it's called the light independent stage and also the other name, the Calvin cycle. So in the dark stage, NADPH transfers those electrons and protons. And bear in mind that it's not just one NADPH, there's going to be many of these molecules. And the electrons and the protons transferred are going to combine with carbon dioxide to form carbohydrate, glucose. And these reactions are all fueled by the breakdown of ATP and the ATP was formed in the light stage. So based on what you know about photosynthesis, the light stage and the dark stage, what do you think you could do if you were a horticulturist or a farmer to increase the rate of photosynthesis? Firstly, light is an essential requirement, so make sure there's lots of light by using high light intensity lamps. So the next consideration would be temperature because the dark stage reactions, they take place in the stroma of the chloroplast and the stroma contains enzymes. Plant enzymes work best when in a range, temperature range of between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius. So the use of heaters to ensure this temperature is maintained could be an idea. The next consideration is carbon dioxide. You need to ensure that there's a plentiful supply of carbon dioxide for the process to continue. So what you could do is you could use heaters that burn fossil fuels and release the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So I hope at the end of this video, you now have a fair idea of what's going on at the light stage and the dark stage reactions. And you could answer possibly a question on the rate of photosynthesis. So go on and watch the other videos because they contain other information that will help you do the higher level questions. So watch the ordinary level video first. That always helps. So the very best of luck. You know yourself to do exam questions and to check the official marking schemes.